At the end of last week, it looked like the front runner was Neil Gorsuch, and there are a few sort of close seconds. We don't know who is going to be the nominee, but the president has said that evangelicals will be happy. Right. So Neil Gorsuch is, is certainly one of the front runners. The other name to keep an eye on is a guy named Tom Hardiman, another federal appeals court judge in Pittsburgh. Uh, both of them very young, both appointed by George W. Bush to their current post, both generally with uh, fairly conservative track records. Now, what do we know about their positions on certain really hot button items like, for example, gun control and abortion? So neither of them has ruled directly on uh, abortion. Uh, they have done some other things that suggest maybe they will be uh, in favor of rolling back abortion rights, perhaps even overturning Roe v. Wade. Neil Gorsuch, for example, wrote a book uh, arguing against the legalization of assisted suicide. On guns, Tom Hardiman has been very out there as an advocate for a robust Second Amendment. He had a case involving a New Jersey law that limited uh, the carrying of handguns. Uh, he said that law was unconstitutional. Said, he said something the Supreme Court has never said, which was that the Second Amendment applies outside the home. It gives you a right to self-defense even when you're out in public. How, Greg, controversial a pick would William Pryor be? He would be considerably more controversial than either of the other two, just because he has said more controversial things that go beyond just interpreting the law. He's talked about his own view of things. For example, on abortion, not only has he said that Roe v. Wade, as he put it, is the worst abomination in the history of constitutional law, but he has said he considers it to be the murder of innocent unborn children. Uh, he's also talked about uh, the nation being a Christian nation founded on Christian values. The other two have been much more circumspect. They certainly uh, have have been conservative in, in reading the law, but they haven't uh, done things that would raise the kind of red flags that Bill Pryor has. Greg, how about events over the weekend? How have the events with regards to President Trump's immigration policy, how do you think they've upended or changed the dynamic of the confirmation process? Well, it's certainly going to remain to be seen, the full answer to that. But at a minimum, you can expect Democrats will start talking a lot more about executive power, executive overreach, wanting to make sure that uh, a new justice, uh, if, if a case comes up there, would be willing to say, no, Donald Trump, you went too far. Uh, not really clear that any of these judges have something in their background that you know, clearly indicates how they would act on that. But it will be, a, at a minimum, a topic in the confirmation process. Greg, we've had only eight out of nine justices for almost a year now. What are some of the cases and some of the decisions that a newly complete court will have to make when we eventually do have one? Well, the Republicans are hoping to get somebody on the court by the middle of April, which would mean that person could sit for the last round of arguments at the Supreme Court uh, this term. So far, the court hasn't scheduled arguments. Potentially, or they, they've granted cases, but they haven't said what arguments they're going to hear then. Potentially, we could have a big church-state case. Uh, potentially, we could have a case on transgender rights and looking, looking ahead, certainly voting rights, the power of the president, abortion, all those things are going to come up to the court in the next few years.